Today, we're looking at my top 25 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards from 2021. What's up guys, we're back with another video. And as you guys know, the card market and PSA graded market has gone down quite a bit since all the hype in 2020 and 2021. This gave me an idea. I made a video in February, 2021 of my top 25 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I documented the price in the video of the cards value at that time. So I think now would be awesome to go back and see how those cards are doing in the market right now. We're gonna be looking at cards I sold, what price I sold them at, cards that I haven't sold, how much money I've lost by not selling them or made by not selling them and other things like that. But before we do that, I have a giveaway. I'll be giving away 24 packs of Tactical Masters, more packs from in the live stream when we didn't finish opening all of our packs. So if you guys wanna win those, just make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let me know what you think about the card prices going down, what cards you've lost money on, made money on, or uh, do you, how do you feel about the card market prices right now? Are you worried about it? Are you confident that it'll go back up? What do you think? All right, we are starting at number 25. And by the way, I'm doing the same exact cards from the last 25. I'm not like reordering them, doing my actual top 25, most expensive. I'm taking the top 25 most expensive from that video a year and a half ago, and we're reviewing those specific cards. So number 25 in that video was a rainbow dragon. We have the rainbow dragon ghost rare from tactical evolution. Funny story. I was getting ready for this video and I found 24 of my 25. Well, technically I've sold a few, but I had most of my cards and I could not find one of them. One of them being this card. I could not find it. I looked for like over an hour and I was missing this and my pequeño moss signed by rain Ra rain. <laughs> Rhyme style, and I specifically knew I was missing that Pequeno Moth and this, and those were the two cards I found them. They'd fallen behind like the shelf they were in, so I finally found them after an hour. So this has been a lot of prep for this video, okay, guys? This card in 2021 was worth about a thousand dollars. Now that's not like that crazy because I think our near mint copy of this card is still like six, seven hundred, and currently I still had it estimated at about the same price. So this card right here, I actually have not actually lost any money on. I've just had it at the, around the same price since we pulled it and graded it, which. I did pull this over I think two years ago at this point out of a tactical evolution pack if you guys have not seen that video make sure to go check it out it was amazing one of my biggest pulls like early on in the channel so it was really cool so this is a really nostalgic card for me really awesome but we actually didn't lose any money on it which is really cool so if it was a 10 I don't know if the value would have changed or not but being the PSA 9 still the same value so so far in this video we have lost zero dollars our number 24 card was our Jinzo BGS 9 so if you guys remember this one we actually pulled this in the every pack opening and speaking of that I'm going to be recording that soon for 150,000 subscribers because we are extremely close to hitting it. It's going to be really, really cool. We pulled this in the last one. I forgot to turn the camera on. Classic card, you know, very iconic from being, you know, on the channel over a two year old since we pulled that. This card at the time, 2021, $1,250 for this card, which is actually, you know, pretty decent. Another thing to note is a lot of these cards went up even more and then came back down, but I didn't have the price like documented for all of them at that point. So we're just doing that price. But like, I think this card went up even more than that at one point, but it was $1,250 at that point and the current value is about 1500 so i've actually made 250 dollars on the value of this card which is pretty cool so so far we're actually doing pretty good you're like hey wait what's the big deal i thought the cards were going down you know you're making money just wait just wait number 23 we have a psa 9 flame swordsman notice how i'm not holding it anymore that's because i do not own the psa 9 flame swordsman i, I don't remember when exactly but i sold all of my psa 9 lob supers at some point i i got a few since then but i sold like my flame swordsman my i think it was paul polymerizations and stuff like that for my box back in 2020. So I don't have those anymore, but the current value of that was $1,269.99 is what I had now, which just seems like a meme, but that was the actual price. I don't remember what I sold them for because it was a while back. So I just did the current value for this, uh, $600. So here's where you start seeing, okay, that was less than half of what we had before. We went from $1,269 to $1,270 to 600. So not even half. We have lost quite a bit on that. So about $670 loss. That kind of dries up the, you know, dead even rainbow dragon, the $250 profit from the gin. So we're now back in the negative. So you're starting to see what has kind of happened with card prices. They've gone down quite a bit. Number 22 is also one I sold. This is not an LOB Super, but it's an LOB Ultra. This is the right leg of the forbidden one, PSA 9. This was $1,320 at the time. This one I actually did sell and uh, I actually made $0 off of this one. You might be wondering, how do you make $0 off of a sale? Oh, you guessed it. The mail lost it. 
I actually sold this one to Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh. I shipped it to him and it got lost like in the United States. I don't even think it made out of the United States. I sold it to him for a thousand bucks. So even then I was losing $320, had to refund him a thousand dollars. So I lost 1,320 essentially. And the value now is $660. So yeah, we basically lost 1,320 there. So that was pretty unfortunate. Let's go on to our number 21. This was also a leg of the forbidden one. This was the left leg BGS nine that we pulled out of my second box that I opened. This was worth about 1,320 as well, about the same value and currently it has a $5 higher value. It was $665 on the sale that I found. So kind of funny, it was a little bit more expensive, but even then we still about half the value of what it was before. All right, we are finally back to one that I have, which is the Magician of Faith. This is number 20, I believe on the list. Magician of Faith, Champion Pack 2, which if you don't know, Champion Pack 2 is basically tournament pack, but the second wave. So they did tournament pack one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then they went Champion Pack one through eight. So this is Champion Pack 2. Magician of Faith is a highly desired one because it's the super rare version using like goat format and old formats and stuff like that it's the higher rarity because for a long time they didn't have a higher rarity they just had like the rare version of the metal raiders and stuff like that so this was the super nice version and it's always been highly sought after it's also graded a psa 10 so when i first had this the value in 2021 was 1500 dollars, and currently i have it at the same value but i could not find a listing anywhere so i just assumed okay it's probably around the same value if there's nothing for sale people aren't like selling out of it here's another reason it's only a pop eight so there's only eight of these out there and i have one of them so when there's a lower pop it's kind of harder for the value to go down because usually what happens when a value goes down is people notice that prices are going down and or maybe they need money and they want to sell their card so they put it out and more and more people do that at once so multiple people have their card out for sale and it makes the price go down because you know if you're trying to buy something and there's three options you pick the lowest one or maybe you make an offer at the lowest one and somebody lowers their price and that kind of happens like that but if there's none available then the price never necessarily goes down like you have to wait until somebody actually wants to buy and somebody wants to sell to figure out what the price is next up is a really funny one it just shows you what kind of time we were in in 2021 we have a dark hole lob so we have a super rare PSA 10. This was valued at $2,000 at the time of that video. $2,000 for an LOB super. Like, that's insane. You know, it's it's crazy. But like, at that point, like, packs were going for $2,000. You know, ultras are going for like $10,000 for Exodia heads, even more than that. You know, Blue Eyes is going for $80, you know, whatever it's going for. So the, the prices were nuts at that point. The hype was crazy. So this, currently, I looked it up. I couldn't find a ton of data, but my guesstimate was around $1,000. So this is like half. Half of what it used to be. PSA 10. I mean, it's a super rare, which is really cool. It's an iconic card. I mean, Dark Hole is really awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, $1,000. We lost about half our money there on that one. But uh, yeah, not great. So the next one's even funnier, I think. It's uh, another LOB Super. Trapple, which I think is actually worse, but for some reason it sold for slightly more at $2,015 versus $2,000 for the Dark Hole. It's basically the same price, but currently I have the value at also $1,000. So we lost a little bit over half of our money on this card, but still really cool card. I mean, even here's the thing about the values. It's like if they're in your collection anyway, and you're not going to sell them, the value doesn't really matter that much. If you plan on selling it at some point, it's a real bummer. Like if I was planning on sitting on this and trying to make money, I'd be like, man, I lost all my money, but I need this for my collection. Collection, so we're hanging on to it anyway. It doesn't really matter if it's two thousand, one thousand, one dollar, all that stuff. So we're hanging on to it. I mean, I don't want it to be one dollar. Don't get me wrong, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm not selling it. All right, on to number seventeen. We have one of my favorite cards here is the Rainbow Dragon Misprint. We've already looked at the regular Rainbow Dragon. I did not pull this one unfortunately, but I did purchase this for about four hundred bucks from a friend on Instagram. At this point, probably like three years ago. Like it was a long time ago. But this is one of my favorite cards. I really like it because the Misprint uh, stuff like that. This looks like a play button right here doesn't it? I don't know. I just noticed that it's really cool. So what this is supposed to be is this is supposed to be, of course, the Chaos Neos Ghost Rare, but it says Rainbow Dragon. So pretty cool error there. And then also it's a Mint 9, which there I don't think there's many above this. There's like a couple at 9.5 when I got it. It's probably a couple more now at this point. But the 2021 price for this one was $2,000. And I actually did find a sale for this. Actually, multiple sales for one in BGS 9. So they were one that around 1,900. So it's basically the same price. It's gotten down about 100 bucks, which isn't too bad. And I think this this one definitely has like some really cool like collectability and value for it. So I think it'll hold up pretty strong. So I'm not feeling bad about that one, only losing 100, pretty solid. All right, number 16, we have a card we pulled quite a long time ago. 
the blue eyes shining dragon psa 9 unfortunately this is not a psa 10 but this is another one of my favorite cards we pulled this one probably one of our best pulls of all time eventually we will do another like best pulls of all time you know top maybe we'll do a top 100 pulls at some point would that be awesome or what let me know if you if i should do that top 100 pulls on my channel that would be a long video but it'd be really cool in 2021 we had this valued at 2025 dollars so i was like okay yeah pretty solid for a psa 9 really nice card even though it's not even the original print it's just a reprint on a retro pack but retro pack is just so valuable retro pack too technically but this one looked up the price two thousand dollars we only lost about 25 bucks on this one so this one's holding strong very iconic i always thought the blue eyes old, or the blue eyes shining looks really cool with like whatever those wings are it's got on his face you know it looks really really nice and it's got a like nice gemstone there pretty cool i don't know i i really like the artwork for that one and we only lost 25 bucks it's, it's a solid card it's holding up strong on to the top 15 and at number 15 we have a card that we don't own anymore this card has been through a lot it is the black Black Rose Dragon Ghost Rare. In 2021, I had this card and it was graded a PSA 9. I had it valued at $2,400. This is the card that's probably had the most like it's changed the most, the most action since then. It was a PSA 9. I then regraded it. You guys saw the video, a PSA 10. So obviously the value is going to be quite different now because it, it changed grades. Like it's not just the PSA 9 anymore. It's now a better grade. I actually got an offer quite a bit after I regraded it for $15,000 and decided to sell it. So we actually sold this one. It was valued at $2,400. Same card we sold for $15,000. So this is like oh, the opposite of the video's point. Like, you know, we lost a lot of money on a lot of these cards, but I sold that one and I regraded a higher grade, you know, pretty much everything went right for that one that actually was a pretty big win in terms of value but i do miss that card every once in a while but top 15 uh it probably would have been like my most valuable card if i still had it but it's number 15 on this list at number 14 we have the monster reborn very cool first edition legend of blue eyes we pulled this one as well out of our very first opening yeah pretty cool this is the only lob card or foil that i've pulled and graded a 10 the only one still i've probably tried like 15 different ones and i've i'm one for 15 or whatever so pretty cool that we still have this one PSA 10 in 2021 we had it valued at $2,671 currently it is valued at $2,860 so we made almost $200 on this thing so this actually got up to like $4,000 I think so technically we had like lost money after that but at the time of 2021 we have actually done okay and made a little bit since then so that's what you got to keep in mind another thing it's like back in 2021 that was before our big peak and then it came back down but you can see that even when it came back down a lot, a lot of these values are still higher than they were in 2021 even. So some of the stuff is still holding up pretty well. It just got higher than it is now. So keep that in mind when you're like, you know, getting worried about car prices and stuff like that, that there's going to be some peaks. There's going to be some valleys. That's just how it goes. And we're in, definitely in a valley right now, but we'll see if we can come back up, peak up again, you know, and keep the Yu-Gi-Oh market strong, etc. Number 13 another lb ultra i did grade this one i did not pull it though i got it from a collection uh three plus maybe even four years ago at this point guy of the fierce knight first edition very cool one of my only ultras besides the monster reborn i think i have one more uh, that is not in this list i think it's a right leg so guy of the fierce knight first edition and 2021 and 2021 it was valued at three thousand two hundred and ten dollars so pretty high actually i didn't know guy was worth that much in 2021 and now it's about 2697 so this one has gone down about 500 bucks 400 bucks something like that all right top 12 we have the dark paladin this one has been through rises and falls because in 2021 we had it at 3300 which it was solid at 3000 for a long time and then it got up to even like four and five thousand I think like, it was insane like this thing went way up and now it is way down it's at $1,525 so this card is less than 50% of what it was it was way up at five it's down to 15 I think 15 feels like a steal for a card like this is that a magician's force so you know not an easy set to find not an easy set to open and actually pull something and then if you even pull something great again a magician's force is a nightmare so this feels like a uh, undervalued card at 15 33 I feel like pretty decent that'd be pretty high in this current market but 15 seems super low so it it's gone way down on to number 11 another one that i don't have this is one of the cards that i really really liked but at the time i actually can tell you what causes i've probably told you guys this before but number 11 was my cyber dragon ultimate rare from crv psa 10 this thing was valued at 3500 at the time of 2021 but I ended up selling it for $6,500. I was offered by a guy on Instagram and he's super reputable, super nice guy. Not just because he was a nice guy. The main reason was 
I needed to buy that Magician's Force booster box. And you guys remember how that turned out. So that kind of made it a lot worse. But I sold it to him for 6,500 because I needed to buy this Magician's Force box for like almost 15. I think, was it 15? Maybe something like that. Some ridiculous amount of money for that box that we then pulled $200 out of in uh, our worst opening ever. But uh, I did sell this one. We actually made about $3,000 from that point to uh, when we sold it. So pretty decent in terms of that. I bought the card for I think $750. So we made a lot on the actual sale of it because I bought it before the big hype then the big hype, then I sold it. So I actually sold a couple cards when they were actually valuable, which is nice, but unfortunately we don't have it anymore, which is the sad part of selling cards. Number 10, we got our Cyber Dark Dragon Ultimate Rare. This is one that I will probably never sell unless it turns into a $100,000 card or something ridiculous like that. But this card is just so iconic. What It is, I think, my first big pull on the channel, like when we're talking big time, because I pulled this in like 2018, I think, maybe early 2019, I don't know, out of the Cybernetic cybernetic cyber dark impact box and uh it, it was like upside down you guys remember that clip it was super awesome and uh then it graded a nine and then i regraded a 10 so it's been through a long journey it's one of my favorite artworks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! it just looks so cool it was valued about 3500 at the time of 2021 and now i have it at the same value so i think it went up i got an offer for like six thousand or something maybe 6500 for this card i turned it down because i didn't want to sell it and now it's back down to 35 so that was a while ago that i got that offer so i would say that that is a, an you know, thing of the past or whatever. But I think I couldn't find any sales on it, but I would say it's probably around the same value now. So 3,500, I would say at least for that card, because it is a very hard card to find a PSA 10. Number nine, we have another one that I had valued at 3,500. We have the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. And if you guys remember, wait, did I pull this before? This was after, I pulled this after, out of the Magic Ruler box. We pulled this shortly after that Cyber Dark Dragon, I think. This was like for a, it wasn't a special, but it was pretty soon after we had done like the Pharaoh Servant box of the 500 subscriber special. We opened this bad boy up and got a PSA 10 on it, which was really cool. Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, as I said, 3,500. Now it's only worth about $1,900. So it's gone down quite a bit. This is a card that there are a decent amount of them out there in PSA 10. So that could be part of the reason why it's down. But it's so iconic being, you know, the, the Toon Dragon, etc. from Pegasus. It's still really desired. So we'll see how this kind of pans out being like a higher pop card, but being super popular. So down a lot right now, but I still love the card. I'm glad that I have it. Glad I kept it, even though we've technically lost a lot of money. I just knocked, knocked a lot of cards off my desk. Number eight, we have the Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. This I got in a trade where I traded Guy the Dragon Champion PSA 10 for a bunch of different cards. And most of the cards that I got went down a ton in value, but I still don't regret that trade because the cards that I got were cards that I really wanted in my collection. And Gaia is a cool card and I really like it. I appreciate that it's like a low pop secret rare from LOB, but compared to these cards like Black Luster Soldier, CED, Dark, I think I got Summon Skull and then a uh, Vampire Lord. I just prefer those four cards over that one card. So, so happy with the trade even though i probably in the end have lost a little bit more money but still really cool because this one is i think it was valued at about let's see 3600 at the time it did go up a little bit more after that but now it's only at about 2500 so we have lost about 1100 on this since 2021 but i mean just look at it blackluster soldier you can't ever be upset that you own this card i mean even if you've lost if it goes to zero this is still an awesome looking card i'm glad to have it in my collection still glad i did that trade even though we lost about 1100 bucks you know about a third of our money now at number seven we have the royal decree which this thing has very interesting text on it like it's almost losing some of the text and it got the gym mid 10 but this is another one that's low pop when i got it, it was pop six it's now pop eight so it's still pretty low pop it's an ultra rare from tournament pack you don't get these psa 10 very often so this is a really nice card i had this thing valued at 3800 in 2021 i did get a 60 I think, why do I always think 6,500? I feel like 6,500 is like the max people offer. $6,500 offer, 6,000 or something like that on this card because the guy needed it for his collection. And I was I was tempted, but then I was like, no, I think one day I want to have all the uh, the TP Ultras. So I kept it, I hung on to it. 3,800 bucks, 2021. I valued it about the same because there was no sales or anything. I didn't have it go down because I think when it's such a low pop and there's no sales data, you just got to keep it at the same value because you can't actually you know see that people have been selling it for less. So I've got it at 3,800. We haven't technically lost anything on that like i guess based on my estimate now for number six another one that we got in that trade summon skull this is a card that has taken a huge hit in terms of value 2021 i had this valued at four thousand dollars it got up to even i think six seven thousand at some points so it was very very expensive 
currently it's about $1,700. So it has gone down from like, if it was at six, like it, we're down at like less than 33% of what it was. So we're probably like 25% of the value at some points, which is pretty wild. This is another one. It's from Metal Raiders. Metal Raiders has higher pops usually because they the printing in Metal Raiders was great. I wish Konami could do that like every single time. Like nowadays, they absolutely crushed it because like when you pull those cards, they're centered, they're clean, they don't have scuffing, they don't have waxing, they don't have edge wear. They're super nice. They're pretty easy to grade. You usually get at least a nine. So that's why there's probably a, over 100 summon skulls, I would say pretty solid in PSA 10. But even then, iconic, awesome, ultra rare from Metal Raiders. I mean, who doesn't remember this from the anime? The summon skull, Yugi. Play me over Dark Magician. I take one less tribute. You know the memes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that stuff. So he's just classic. So he's an awesome card. He's lost a ton of value. That This is like the, the one that lost a crazy amount of value in that trade. But I'm still happy to have it because I did not own one of these. Very happy with it. Even at number six, losing a ton of value. Pretty awesome, but pretty wild to see how much it's gone down. Now we're on to number five. Yet another one of the trade, the Chaos Emperor Dragon. Envoy of the End. Another one where the artwork just blows you away. The Secret Rare Foiling is not that crazy or strong in this artwork. I mean, you can see it a little bit. It's not like popping out like crazy, but just the dragon itself just looks absolutely amazing. You love to see this guy. Really, really cool card. I had it valued in 2021 at $4,510. Currently, I have the value at $3,500. So it's gone down about $1,000. So still $3,500 is not bad. I mean, that's a lot of money for a card. Pretty solid Chaos Ember Dragon Envoy with the end. I mean, it's from Invasion of Chaos, which is one of the hardest sets. We've never opened it. The only DM first edition set I've not opened. That's how hard it is to get because it's just very expensive. And if you open a box of that, you're going to lose your money even if you pull this and grade it at 10. So it's like, why would I do it? You know? So eventually we're hopefully going to do it. But this is such an epic card, such an awesome some card it's not a crazy pop either so i think it's a pretty decent one to hold on to i'm pretty happy that i have very happy that i have that one actually on a number four if you remember in 2021 i had three of these i then graded another one later so i think i had four maybe even two more i don't know i've had a lot of these b skull dragons this is the one that i actually pulled out of my box my first metal raiders box opening i kept this one because it's obviously nostalgic because we graded it and we had it all that you know on the channel etc this one was valued in 2021 at a very high amount just like someone's called 4660 62 very specific but i think that it was like the last sale of it so it had gotten very expensive i had three of these i sold one for 4500 slightly under that one a little bit later for 4000 and then i kept this one because this is the one we pulled this one is now worth 1875 dollars so we are all losing a lot of money on b skulls everybody who has one right now but it's b skull i mean it's so awesome it's amazing it's i mean i'm, I'm kind of glad that i don't have three of them anymore because we lost a lot but i'm very glad that i kept this one since we pulled it but hoping that this will rebound quite a bit because this is one of my favorite cards, B-Skull Dragon. I mean, I just remember seeing this at church one day. Somebody had this and I was like, 3,200 attack? Are you kidding me? That's insane. Like, how do I get that card? You know, I wanted it. I didn't know there was a 10 out there. You could just buy that. That'd been a lot easier, but very, very cool card. I, it's way down in value, but such an epic, epic card. Now we're on to the top three. We have a Red Eyes B Dragon. This is the one we pulled the very first LOB video, BGS9. We graded a PSA 9 too, so it's been nines all around. We had it valued at $4,800. I'm sure you could guess that that's down because that's a PS or a BGS9 price. So $4,800. The current price is $2,000. So this one has gone down quite a bit. Not being a 10 is really gonna hurt that. You know, if it's only a PSA or a BGS 9, it's a lot less than like a PSA 10 or something like that. That would hold up a lot better. And even the 10s for this are going down. So very iconic card for me. One that I'm going to hold on to forever because it's just classic remembering that moment when we we're like red eyes, you know, is so amazing. And like my tiny head on that because for some reason I had my green screen up and I made my head like like this big on the screen. I don't know why I did that. Oh, no, no way but it's just hilarious to watch every time. So Red Eyes B Dragon, amazing. We have lost $2,800 on this one. So quite a bit of an L there, but that's still an amazing card that I'm glad I still have. Number two, another Genzo PSA 10, guys. Yes, the one we pulled out of the 500 subscriber special. This was really right after the Cyber Dark Dragon. 500 subscriber special, graded a 10 beautiful condition this was valued at about six thousand dollars at that time these even went up to like 10 twelve thousand at one point like insanely high now they're back down to about five thousand so this is still only about a thousand down from 2021 but it is way down from its high in terms of the highest price 
But this is one of the most classic cards because it was such a good card back in the day. It was also in the anime, and it's a really amazing looking secret rare from Pharaoh's Servant. It has like, it checks all the boxes. It's just a really nice card. I think the, the pop is only in like the 60s maybe, so it's not even that high either. So it has got some value there as well. So this is one of my absolute favorite cards that I have, and it's just an epic card that we pulled, we pulled two of these, you know, one in the big uh, every pack opening that got the nine and then this one. So pretty lucky in terms of the Genzos. On to number one. The final card we have is the Morphing Jar TP2. This one we bought or actually traded and then graded it at 10. So it was a raw card we then graded at 10. We had this valued at $15,000 back in 2021. And that was, yeah, that was the case. It had been bought for $15,000 right around when I made that video. And I was like, oh my goodness, this card is insane. This might have been one of the biggest losses. I think it was the biggest loss in terms of numbers, but I don't know the percentage wise. This thing is only worth about $6,500 right now. So it's gone down way, 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 which is actually surprising because I don't know. It's a pretty nice card. I guess it is in terms of TP Ultras. It's a pretty high pop. It's like in the 20s. The rest are like between like single digits and like the teens. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty high pop. But also this is like, an iconic card and overall like still a 20 pop is really not that high so it's a really really cool card and it has gone down quite a bit it's definitely not my most expensive card anymore i would say that the blue eyes psa 9 that i have is probably more than this but still it's one of my absolute favorite cards this was one of my first big cards to grade i remember grading this and getting a 10 i was like oh my gosh it was like a three thousand dollar card in like 2019 i think when i did and i was like wow three thousand dollars for a Yu-Gi-Oh card insane so that's number one overall we lost about this much i think my numbers i had twelve thousand two hundred ninety five, but i'm pretty sure i was off by about 600 so the actual total will be up here that's how much we've lost by holding on to these cards slash uh, selling some of them so if i didn't sell like the black rose and the bee skulls and the cyber dragon those cards i approximately made about twenty one thousand dollars selling versus like what they're valued at now if i hadn't done that we'd be at like a 33 34 thousand dollar loss if i'd kept all the cards which is pretty amazing that's a lot of money 34 thousand rucks and 34 i guess that is fate but do i regret not having sold all my cards and making an extra thirty four thousand dollars honestly no i really don't regret it these are a lot of cards that have a lot of meaning to me some of them i bought some of them i've traded some of them i've pulled and I just like the cards they are in my collection. I think they're awesome. And even if they're going down, I'm still happy to own them. Let me know in the comments how you feel about collection, stuff like that. Do you have cards for collection or investment? Or do you have both? Do you have some for investment, some for collection? Do you have some that are in your collection, but you would sell? Or do you have some in your collection that you would never sell, no matter what the price gets to? I'm interested to see what how you guys feel about graded cards and just regular cards in general, in terms of uh, like selling and investing and stuff like that. So I th hope this was interesting. I thought it would be a fun idea to revisit it's such an old video, like a year and a half ago, and see what the price have done since we know the prices have gone down recently so if you did enjoy it make sure to subscribe to the channel for more epic content like this shout out to choice 333 nightshade gaming yt hayden jameson squirtle hoppus flexi boy dizzy ernesto deanda puffins of doom tcg trust of cards jt cho tomato juice daxter tone Fo show and then a tie show christopher ward ian musa john nolan junior barding mike nance mimic gecko seth fisher stanley thomas mcclain and tone z thank you guys for supporting the channel and i'll see you guys next time peace